Um, specifically, can you tell me, uh, explain to me the Swedish understanding of, uh, of rape in terms of having sex with someone who is helpless and how that relates to this particular uh, case with regards to Sofia Weiland. Okay. The common understanding, I mean, general people's understanding, is that if you're having sex with somebody when you're in the street, it is a crime of rape. But what the law says is, in order to be a rape, you have to be asleep, and then you have to be regarded to be in a helpless state. For instance, uh, married couples, sometimes you do sexual acts when the other part, party is asleep. That is not what the law is trying to get at, because, because within a marriage you normally don't consider yourself to be in a helpless state. Do you understand what I mean? I do. I do. Yeah. It's it's just like the, what the law is trying to protect. It's it's say for instance, if somebody at a party had had a bit too much to drink and falls asleep, then nobody can touch that person and have sex with them because because they will be regarded to be because of the sleep they are in a helpless state. In Sophia's case, she had had sex with Julian two or three times prior to the event. She, uh, everything was consensual. And because she had kind of sleep, say, for ten minutes or something, uh, that did not put her in a helpless state. And what's also interesting, when she actually wakes up, as she says, and discovers he's inside of her, uh, she does nothing to, say, stop. I don't want it. She just asked me if he's wearing a condom, and when she finds out he isn't, she then says, I hope you don't have HIV. So the, so the case is, it's, it's like, uh, she wants to use a condom, but she consents to have sex without the condom. And that's the whole issue, and afterwards she gets very worried that she caught it. Mr. Kemp, you've actually written on this, uh uh, in some of your writings that are available on WL Central, the idea of uh, legislation, rape legislation that, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that seems to patronize women. Um, comment on this particular incident, in this particular case with Sophia Weiland. What is your understanding of it? Um, it's pretty much as uh, Goran has explained, and He's already explained the circumstances with the confusion between the words uh, want and consent. Um, I think during that conversation or that uh, particular activity that Gorham was referring to, when uh, Sophia asked him if he was wearing anything, and if I recall the article correctly, he said, I'm wearing you. Um, now, that continued, as Gorham has indicated, without... Um, her withdrawal of consent without her saying stop or something of that nature. So both in Swedish law and in um, Australian UK law and, and, and I would understand it to be uh, US law, that is a consensual act. I, I absolutely agree with what Goran is saying in his article is that um, in relation to Sophia Weiler, that there is no case to answer, there is no crime being committed. What has happened is that she has ended up being very distressed by the fact that for the first time, apparently in her life, she had unprotected sex and that was a worry to her. And and therefore she got into a situation of going to the police station. Um, uh, it would appear at uh, the instigation of Anna Arden purely to um, try and um, get some information about forcing Julian Assange to go and have an HIV test. Um, so those are the circumstances. He, he can uh, uh, document that um, a lot more clearly than I can um, because he's been working on it for, for a much longer period of time. But the difficulty is where this all gets terribly, terribly confused is back to this issue of consent or lack of consent. Unfortunately, the Swedish legislation is in a couple of parts. 
I will probably have to correct myself when I uh, have claimed in some of my articles that there's no mens rea, and I'll, I'll just explain that briefly. Mens rea is the Latin for guilty mind. We also refer to uh, that as the intent element of a crime. In other words, the prosecution has to prove not only that a certain act or conduct occurred, in this particular case, a sexual act of, of sexual intercourse, but that in our system, that that occurred without the consent of the alleged victim. And we and there's a further element, which is the, the real mens rea element of um, the accused, that the accused knew that the alleged victim wasn't consenting or the victim wasn't consenting, as the case may be. Now, um, unfortunately, as Goran has indicated, there appears to be mens rea in Swedish law, but it's in a different section of the Act, and we've been discussing this over the weeks and propose to um, write a joint article about it. Um, and in this set of circumstances, consent is the issue, but it's, it's confused in, in the minds of a lot of people in Sweden to the detriment of both victims and, as we are seeing now, to the detriment of a defendant.